Who says unicorns aren't real? Real but rare. Unicorns are startup companies that are worth one billion dollars or more. The fire. Perth boy Lawrence Escalante owns one of them. Virtual Gaming Worlds, his online gambling company, is worth conservatively $5.5 billion. That's a lot less than fellow Unicorn Canva, which has taken a hammering lately, but is still worth $25 billion US. I reckon Lawrence is going to close that gap pretty smartly because his company, which is billed as a virtual casino, does something that Melanie Perkins' company does not. It makes a lot of money. Oh, screw it. Mm. Virtual Gaming Worlds has just revealed it made a profit of $454 million last financial year. It brought in revenue of $3.45 billion in 2021-22, most of it coming from the good old US of A. A couple of weeks ago, business analyst Ibis World had VGW as the sixth biggest private company in Australia by revenue. That list was compiled before these latest financial results were made public. VGW is now close to displacing health insurance giant HCF as number four. HCF, uncommon care. And Escalante's business isn't far off CBH, which handles WA's 20 million tonne annual grain harvest. I mean, it's just insane. Well, what's more insane is that we hadn't heard about this guy until 2014. The West Australian newspaper probably didn't believe Lawrence when he talked himself up back then because they put the story on page 100. In 2014, Escalante had such a rinky-dink operation, he didn't even have his own office. He was working out of a corner in Space Cubed on St George's Terrace. Your new office. How great is that, right? And he was pretty pleased that he'd managed to scrape together 10 million in seed funding. How does someone go from 10 million to 3.45 billion? In eight years. Mm. Makes Andrew Forrest look like a thumb twiddler. Come on. Challenge me. Okay, but I still don't get how he makes his money. Isn't online gambling illegal in USA? It is, but Lawrence found a loophole. First, let me assure you that this is not one of those shady pyramid schemes you've been hearing about. He worked out that if you use real money to buy virtual coins to play virtual slot machines, then redeem your virtual winnings for real money, you can technically say it's not gambling, it's gaming. Right, that's a big loophole. No. It's a massive loophole. The reason I know it's a massive loophole is because Lawrence said so himself. I don't really like using the word, but there's this massive loophole <laughs> in US trade marketing law, is what he said back in 2014. In the same interview, he said this massive loophole meant VGW might one day pull in $1 million a day. We all thought that this was absurd, and this one-time HJ's burger flipper was nuts. Ding, phrase it done, ding, phrase it done, ding, phrase it done. Turns out a million dollars a day was absurd, absurdly low, because he's now pulling in nearly 10 times that. The nine and a half million a day he clocked last year works out at $396,000 an hour, or six and a half grand a minute. Wow, so who's playing these games? Yokels from Midwest America. Get off the dang roof! Who played the games while isolating because of the COVID and kept playing the games because they are mm. Moorish. I'm here today because I'm addicted. Lawrence has always known he's on ethically shaky ground. He's tried to head off criticism by revealing he understood problem gamblers because there were three in his family and that his mum was uncomfortable with VGW's business model. Lawrence ignored Mrs Escalante and held on to two thirds of a company which has paid out $750 million in dividends since mid-2020, 500 million of which went straight to him in cash. And that's why Mr Escalante drives cars like this, to meet private jets like this, in order to holiday in places like this. The more he makes, the more someone's got to lose. Lawrence reckons the instant feedback loop of digital gambling means he knows exactly who's starting to bet too often or in worryingly high amounts, and he can intervene. That doesn't actually happen in real casinos. Hit me again. That's fine if he does intervene. It's a private company, so we don't know too much about its environmental, social and governance policy. Sorry, classified information. That might change soon, though, because Lawrence is looking to float VGW on the US stock market. Well, Essendon's corporate governance policy is pretty clear. Yeah, the Bombers thought they'd pulled off a corporate coup when they announced former banking kingpin Andrew Thornburn would be the club's new CEO. 
they thought Andy could bring learnings from his time as boss of one of Australia's biggest companies, but then got worried he'd also bring learnings from the City on a Hill Church, which he chaired and which has less than progressive views on homosexuality and abortion. Thornburn was iced 30 hours into the Don's job and has now got the hump that some parts of society are intolerant of his church's intolerance. He says his faith made him an effective leader at National Australia Bank. You know, growing your business isn't important, but your motivation must be to look after your client. The Banking Royal Commission found he effectively led $600 million out of the accounts of unsuspecting customers who were victims of the fee-for-no-service scandal, including some customers who had already gone to God, at least the heterosexual ones. Say what you like about gambling, at least Escalante's customers have a pulse. Put it on, 41. I've got a feeling about that number. The wheel only goes to 36, sir. OK, put it on, 36. I've got a feeling about that number. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.